Orbit piercings, pros, cons, buy a piercer, that's me, coming up right now. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, located inside the warm and inviting skin kitchen. So when I talk to you about these things, I talk to you as an expert who has done this piercing and helped people through the process of healing it. Orbit piercings, in case you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, are piercings usually done in ears that um, are done with one ring. So instead of having a ring that goes through one piercing, they go through multiple piercings. Kind of like an industrial, but with a ring. They can be done anywhere where there's a flat two-sided surface. Basically it goes like so. So it orbits the uh, ear or what have you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through five advantages, five disadvantages of getting this piercing to give you kind of an educated, kind of brief view of whether or not this is a piercing for you. So first off, I'm going to go through the pros, the advantages. Number one, this is an extremely rare piercing. I've been doing piercings for 25 years and I've only done probably under 100 of these. This is not a piercing that you're going to see a lot of in the wild. So if you're one of those people that wants something unique and different and kind of elegant, this is a piercing for you. Number two, there's a number of different combinations that can be done depending on your anatomy, the skill of your piercer, and um, the jewelry that's available. Uh, probably the more common ones are the lobe and upper ear cartilage, also the vertical helix, or which is done perpendicular. Um, I've also seen some, haven't personally done it, that have combined multiple piercings inside the inner area, including the dafe, the helix, um, and the rook, and even the dafe in one case. Really comes down to whether or not those angles will work, and like I said, it really is dependent on your anatomy in the skill of the piercer who does it. Number three fits well into the flow of the ear. This is something that if it's done correctly can kind of fit into and accent the ear and the shape of it and what it should look like. Number four, moving right along, of the pros. This piercing, or particular style of piercing can be added to an existing piercing. For example, if you had an upper ear cartilage, it is possible to do a second one that fits with that first one to create an orbit. Uh, it's one of the rare piercings that you can do this with. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on whether or not the piercing is healed, what angle it healed at, and whether or not you have the anatomy that's gonna work well. But that is a possibility that you can kind of upgrade a piercing that you already have. Number five has a long history of healing. This is not something new. Numerous people have done this over the years. Uh, it's not, I think, dating back to the late 80s. Um, it's not something that's new. It's something that is tried and true. That does not mean it's an easy heal. And we're gonna get into that when we get into the cons. So here's the disadvantages. Number one, you have to have the correct anatomy. You can't just force the jewelry into the area and make it fit. If you do that, you are going to have issues with the piercing healing and or piercings healing, or um, it's gonna cause things like scarring and other problems, or it's just gonna be impossible to do in the first place. The ring needs to be large enough to allow for flatness. This is a misconception. A lot of people think that with orbits that it would just be the distance between the two piercings, but we also have to take into account how flat the angle of the jewelry is going to be that's inside the piercing area. If it is heavily arched, it can create hot spots or pressure points that can lead to really obsessive scarring and all kinds of other problems. So a lot of times, even though we only want, we would like to do it maybe three eighths of an inch uh, from one to another, in reality, it's going to work much better to do it with a half inch ring that's going to give us a flatter flow or almost straight like area that's inside the piercing. Number three, 
piercer has to be extremely skilled. This is not a piercing that somebody who's just picked this up can do. You really have to understand the mechanics of piercing. You have to have your angles did on. There cannot be a slight variation one way or another, this way, that way, or what have you. It has to be perfect or extremely close to perfect. They also have to have that eye to know where it's gonna fit best and do the least amount of damage or, pro or cause problems during the healing process. Number four, you are limited to the type of jewelry that's going to work in this. It needs to be circular. Uh, there are some custom pieces you can get, like curved barbells that are a little flatter on one side, or they can be bent. Um, I have used like a circular barbell and then expanded it to make it fit into the area and work well with this particular piercing. But it is definitely stuck with that kind of that type of jewelry, regardless. You can, however, do the piercing um, together as an orbit and then remove the jewelry and turn it into two piercings if there are issues. Number five. Basically, this is where I go through the consultation part. What I would tell you if you came into my studio and asked me to do an orbit piercing on you. Um, this covers kind of what it's going to take, some things you may not have thought about, and stuff that are going to change in your life and the type of commitment that's going to need to be made. Average chilling time, I would say on this one, ranges from, it tends to take anywhere from two to four months. It varies from person to person. A lot of it comes down to where it's located at. It can heal sometimes very similar, like if you're doing an upper ear cartilage, it'll heal almost exactly like an upper ear cartilage. Sometimes it does take an additional amount of time to heal just because it's kind of a rigid location. Um, during which time, I'm gonna suggest that you do hot soaks or compresses with warm water and sea salt twice daily uh, for 10 minutes and that you clean it in the shower using an antimicrobial or germicidal soap at least once a day. Um, Cross-contamination prevention, common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it, try to handle it by the ends whenever possible, or the bead. Uh, avoid handling the piercing, keep everybody else's germy little fingers away from it, and understand that microorganisms do move on the surface of your skin. With ear piercings especially, I don't know how to stress this, you do need to isolate them and keep things away from them for the whole healing period. Not just until it stops hurting, but the whole healing period. Um, no oral contact or exchanging of bodily fluids on near around the piercing. Uh, keep your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it. Avoid contact with unclean objects. I know I'm kind of repeating myself. Things like telephones, earphones, headphones, bed, uh, earbuds, eyeglasses, anything that comes in contact with it needs to either be disinfected on a regular basis or completely avoid contact. You also want to avoid any type of helmets or headgear or hats that come in contact with the piercing. Um, anything that blocks the flow of oxygen in the piercing would be another thing we'd be concerned about. Uh, keep pets away from it. Do not let them sleep in the bed with you. Do not submerge the piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of. Yes, that's right, you cannot swim while you have a healing piercing. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that, but the biggest one is we want to keep you from getting an infection. Now, let's talk about lifestyle, things that need to be changing. Uh, you cannot sleep on the piercings until it heals. You do want to figure out some way to either elevate it off the bed or completely avoid the possibility of sleeping on it. If you're involved in any type of sporting activities, headgear, etc., will not, will cause problems with this piercing. Um, if you are in competitive sports or something where you may have to remove the jewelry for long periods of time to compete, don't get this piercing done until after that part of your life's over. If you have any medical procedures or anything else that may be coming up that will require you to move the jewelry for long periods of time, once again, I don't suggest getting the piercing done until after you are through with that. If you have a job or employment or involved in any type of organization that might be considered professional, I would suggest contacting the person that's in charge beforehand because this piercing does kind of hit that bleeding edge that may freak a few people out. Make sure there's not an issue with you having the piercing and wearing the piercing during work, play, what have you, training. If you're planning on going on vacation, I really advise waiting until afterwards to get the piercing done, not only because uh, you might be involved in activities and you're probably gonna wanna swim, maybe go scuba diving or jet skiing or something, 
being on vacation and watching everybody else do it knowing you can't is not fun and getting in that water is going to cause problems. The other thing is, is you cannot control how clean your environment, uh, the places that you're staying in, et cetera, on vacation. So let's take that stress out of the situation and just wait till you get back to get that piercing done. So I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, if you have any additional advice that you would like to add, maybe you've healed this piercing out in the past and they would like to share what your experiences were like, Go ahead and leave a comment. Um, if you'd like, if you have any questions about this particular piercing, also leave a comment. Uh, I do answer them when I have time, and I'm happy to do so. It's all about educating people. That's why we do this. I, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, because that's applauding, and that makes me happy and warm and fuzzy. And everybody likes me when I'm warm and fuzzy, not when I'm cold and prickly. If you enjoyed this and you would like to see more content, hit the subscribe button. We post uh, roughly about four to five videos a week now. Uh, we have a couple more in the planning um, on the tattoo side, so you can see those kind of appearing here hopefully in the next, uh, uh, next month or so. Happy piercing. Good luck with your piercings. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your piercing needs in the future.